hi guys this is Natraj I back with the other video today I'm going to talk about that provisioning the EBS storage on AWS EKS using Terraform so what is the EBS storage driver so the EBS storage driver is implemented the CSS specifications used by the container organization to managing the life cycles of Amazon EBS volumes which means that when I deploy in the applications that need to be retain the data in case of need to create the precision storage. So the precision storage allowed to store the application data external from the pod running. One of the major drawback is EBS volume can be only used by the single pod at the same time on the one node, which means that two node you cannot able to mount the EBS volume at the once. So you have to make sure properly allocating the pod being be located at that node, then you volume attached to it. Architecture diagram. In this video, I am going to provisioning the EKS cluster along with that worker node. After that, I am going to create the storage class and the persistence volume claim. So once that the persistence volume claim is available, then I am going to associate it with that the volume to the pod. So the entire operation I done with the Terraform. So we'll be moving to that next slide. Installation process through Terraform. So the entire steps I've written with the Terraform. So for easy understandings, I come with that step by steps. So we'll be see on that step one. Step one is that configuring that IMA policies. The pod must having the permission to performing that EBS API operation such as that creating or deleting or volume attaching to that EC2 worker node. So this required that IMA policy. Step 2 configuring that IMA role and the service account. So we need to associate that IMA role with that Kubernetes service account. So the service account can providing that AWS permission to the container. Step 3 deploying that Amazon EBS CSA driver. So currently there are two types of deploying the EBS CSA driver using the Helm or using that Amazon EKS add-on. So in our case we are using that Helm chart. Step 4 creating that storage class using the EBS CSA provisioner. So we can configuring the storage class using the EBS CSA driver as a provisioner allowed to dynamically provision the EBS volume using the storage class. Step 5 creating the PVC from storage class. So creating the persistence volume client is requested for the storage. Step 6 creating the pod definition. So we are creating the pod in the Kubernetes using the Nginx image and associated that PVC as that volume. So we are moving to that Visual Studio code. We are at that Visual Studio code. The entire code is available on my repo. If you want, you can clone it. So it will be first we will look at it at that main.tf file. So in this main.tf file, so we will be first we will see on that AWS underscore partitions. This particular data block mainly used to that look up the current AWS partitions. Next one is that AWS caller identity. This also resource data block. So basically to fetch that account ID, user ID and ERN etc. Next one is that AWS EKS cluster data block. So this particular block mainly used for providing the existing EKS cluster information. So in our case, I'm initially I'm provisioning the EKS cluster. Later on that I'm executing that EBS volume as that separate Terraform code. So in our case, I'm passing that my cluster information via in variable. Next one is that local variable block. This local variable block mainly used to that variable substitution. You can see this in the partitions. The partitions I am grabbing from that my data block, that the AWS partitions. Next one, next one is that account ID. The account ID also I am getting from my AWS caller ID data block. Next one is that YDC provider and ARN. So basically I am fetching the data from my EKS cluster block. So because by default it comes with HTTPS, here I am replacing the HTTP. Yes. Next one is that YDC provider name so in this air and I'm, I'm substituting with that local variables next one is that EBS CSI EKS rule 
This particular model mainly is to create the ASIM role policy for the IMA role and used to that Kubernetes service account. Next one is that EBS CSI driver. So I am written with the Helm chart. So it basically to deploy the driver using the Helm. Next one is that storage class. So this storage class resource mainly to providing the way for dynamically provisioning the persistent storage for the application on that Kubernetes clusters. So in the metadata, you can see a thing the name. So G2 encryption. So basically I'm creating that encrypted volume. Next parameter is a storage underscore provisioner. So here we have to point out out EBS CSI AWS.com. So this is a driver pod we have to point actually. Next one is that reclaim policies. Here I am providing with that delete. So delete means that the storage volume will be deleted. It when they no longer required by the pod. So also there is another option also available that is a retain. Retain means that the storage volume is retained can be reused by that other pod. Next one is that allow volume expansion equal to true. I am providing the privilege to extend at the volume. The next parameter is the volume bind mode. Here I am providing the value called weight for first consumer. So the particular weight for first consumer is mainly used to that delaying the binding for dynamic provisions of the PV until the pods will be recreated. Then I am moving to that in manifest directory under I created that two couple of YAML file. First I will click on that climb.yml file. This climb.yml file basically the kind object is PVC so persistence volume climb I am allocating the name called EBS hyphen climbs my main parameter is that assessing mode here I am providing with that read write once this particular parameter mainly used to the volume mount as that read write by the single node the storage class I provide as that G2 encryptions here I am requested that storage call 4GP I am moving to that a pod.yml file basically i am creating the web service as the nginx applications in this container uh, sections if there is a main two parameter will be their volume mount and their persistence volume claim so the volume mount i'm mounting that uh, volume into that particular pod this is a path i am defining here the next important parameter is that parameter volume claim so the claim name should be similar to that or whichever we have created the uh, climb.yml file no? so the same the name should be the similar both case so we are moving to the terminal executing the entire terraform process right now i am at the terminal so already i am provisioning the eks cluster for time saving so i am just executing the kubectl get node command to validate the how many node is running on it Yes, one node is up and running. So even I'm already cloned my repo in my branch. So here is list of files will be present. So directly I'm going to executing the Terraform apply command here. Yeah, it be showing is the five resources going to add. So I'm providing that yes is the input. Now the EBS CSI driver is installing. Yes, Terraform job is successfully completed. So I am going to manifest directory. So first I will be going to executing that uh, climb.yml file. Yes, so I'm applied the changes. So I'm just I'm going to evaluate PVC is created or not. So if you, you can see the status, it be showing as a pending. Now I'm going to executing that parted OML file. Now pod also created. 
this time checking body is created or not it takes some time now the pod is up and running then I can executing the pvc command one more time yeah now the status is bound will be showing but earlier is showing as a pending now it be bound uh, we are moving to the aws console so i am scrolling down that uh, in the volume section so i am clicking uh, volume tab yeah you can see i think the 4 gb size is showing if I scroll down here, uh, the volume status is in used. So we are successfully we are installing that EBS volume mounted with that part. I hope this video will be useful to everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.